Um, before we get into dividing polynomials, we're going to talk about how to divide numbers, using long division with numbers. So no, you cannot put this in the calculator. So No, I don't want you to put this in the calculator. We actually want to go through how to long divide because we're going to use the same process today, but we're going to apply the process to polynomials. So I have 17 divided by 4,213. So if I'm actually long dividing this by hand, what's the first thing I'm going to do? You need to figure out how many times does 17 go into 42. Okay. So um, 17 goes into 42 how many times? Twice. Twice. And then what do I do after I figured that 2 out? Two. Multiply. 2 times 7 is 4. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I do what? Subtract. Subtract. What is 42 minus 34? 8. Okay, so now I have that 8. What do I do? Bring down the 1. Okay. And then I need to figure out what? How many times 17 goes into 81? So the question is, how many times does 17 go into 81? 4. Okay. So 4 times. Let's check. 4 times 7 would be 20. Eight, carry the two. Four times one is four, plus two is six. 81 minus 68 is 13. Okay, what would have happened if when I had done that subtraction, instead of getting 13, I'd gotten something like 24? What would that tell me? I can take out another 17. That 17 goes into it another time, okay? All right, so now I've got 13. What do I do from here? Bring down the 3, um, and then 17 goes in 133 how many times? A lot. Okay. a lot. That's a good answer. I think it's 7. I think it's 7 times. 7 times 7 is? 49. Yeah. So 9 carry the 4. 7 times 1 is? Plus 4. And what's 133 minus 119? 14. Okay, so do I keep going or do I stop here? Stop. Okay. If I, if I were to keep going, it would just give me the decimal form of my answer, but I don't want the decimal form of my answer. So we could say that our answer the, to this problem is 247. And what about 14? What is that? The remainder. the remainder. So typically, you have always written R14, which means remainder of 14. Yeah. Today, we are going to write that a little bit differently. So it's going to be 247 plus 14 over 17, which is the same idea. It's saying that our, it goes into a 247 times and then 14 over 17 times, so not quite one whole time. So that's where that remainder comes into play. That's how we're going to be writing our problems today is in that last notation. So we're going to use the same idea of multiplying or dividing numbers, I'm sorry, and we are going to apply that to polynomials. So we're going to start with problem three on page 394. And they've already given us the problem, so I'm going to write it out. I'm going to draw my little division house. Okay, so I have the polynomial 15x to the third plus 8x minus 12 divided by 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. Where does the 15x to the third plus 8x minus 12, where is that going to go? Okay, now don't start writing it all just yet because I'm going to write it as 15x to the third plus 0x squared plus 8x minus 12. So what did I do differently? I filled in what space? I filled in, yes, I filled in the x squared space so it doesn't skip anything. And you're going to want to do that because if you don't, your problem won't line up neatly. Okay? If you don't do it, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to like mess up the problem, but it just won't line up well. And if we can do things, because math gets complicated, we know that. So if we can do things to help keep ourselves organized along the way, that's one of those things that will be helpful. That if our polynomial skips something in, in its process, that it went from x to the third to x, therefore skipping x to the second, we put a 0x squared in there. Why don't I just put like regular x squared? 
Yes, that is an implication that there is an x squared there and there was not. And then what's going to go on the outside of this problem? 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. And I'm going to use this same idea of long division with numbers to do long division with polynomials. So thinking back to the problem that we had a second ago, what was the very first thing that we did? I had to figure out how many times 17 went into 42, right? Okay, so we're going to use that same idea, but instead of figuring out how many times 17 goes into 42, I need to figure out how many times 3x to the second goes into 15x to the third. So what is 15x to the third divided by 3x to the second? Five. So that goes on top. Okay, so looking back to our numbers, okay, I figured out, we figured out that 17 went into 42 two times. What do we do when, once we figured out that 17 went into 42 twice? We multiplied by 2, right? Did we just multiply the 1 by 2 or the 7 by 2? We multiplied the whole thing by 2, correct? So we're going to do that here. We're going to multiply 5x times 3x squared. What's that going to be? Okay. And I'm going to multiply 5x times 6x. 3x squared. 30x squared. And I'm going to multiply 5x times 1. Okay. And again, comparing that to our problem, after we multiplied 17 times 2, what do we do next? Subtract, Subtract it. So we're going to do that again. We're going to subtract this entire row. Well, if I'm subtracting that entire row, what does that really mean is happening there? You're combining like terms. Okay, what's the number? Like I put this in parentheses because I want to show that we're, that we're subtracting this whole thing, not just one part of it. What would be the number in front of my parentheses? A 1. Technically, there is a negative 1 there. So what would I do with that negative 1? So really, that gives me a negative 15x, a negative 30x squared, and a negative 5x. And then I'm going to switch this 1 that was out here that was negative to positive now because I took care of that. And now I just get to do math. So what is 15x cubed minus 15x cubed? 0x cubed. Do I have to write it then? No. I'm just going to mark them out that they canceled. By the way, those two should always cancel. If they don't cancel, you did something wrong. Okay, then next I have 0x squared minus 30x squared. What is 0x squared minus 30x squared? 30x squared. Okay. And then I have 8x minus 5x, which is... 3x. Okay, what do you think I'm going to do next? Bring down the negative 12. And then I start the process all over. And now I have to figure out how many times 3x squared goes into negative 30x squared. Or what is negative 30x squared divided by 3x squared? Negative. And just negative 10, not negative 10x, just negative 10. Okay? Why is it just negative 10? Um, because if I, when I divide, like, or think about this, when I multiply negative 10 times 3x squared, that's going to give me negative 30x squared? Exactly. Like, it's not going to give, and I need these to cancel out in a second. That's why we did 5x. Yes, that's why we did 5x, because 5x times 3x squared gave us 15x to the third. Okay, so now I multiply. Negative 10 times 3x squared would be negative 30x squared. And then negative 10 times 6x. And negative 10 times positive 1. 
and I'm subtracting this whole row, and subtracting really means that I am, all right, so subtracting means all my signs get changed, so really this is going to end up as a positive 30x, a positive 60x, and a positive 10x, or it's not positive 10. And what happens to my negative 30x squared and my positive 30x squared? They cancel. What happens to my 3x and my 60x? 63x. And my negative 12 and my 10? Okay. Do I keep going? That's the remainder. So that 63x minus 2, that part is my remainder. So then I can write my final answer as 5x minus 10 plus 63x minus 2 divided by 3x squared plus 6x plus 1. So, looking at page 393, they have another problem for us. This one is already set up. Um, notice that they added in 0x squared here for us, okay? So, they added that in for us. We didn't have to think about it, so that was convenient. Um, and if you can imagine, like, thinking back to our problem that we just did, if we hadn't had that 0x squared there part, again, our stuff just wouldn't have lined up well. Okay, that's the whole purpose of it, is that things line up well. And when they line up well, that makes doing the math easier because we don't have to like think about how to organize it. So um, if we were to do this problem, kind of walk me through what's the first thing I need to figure out. How many times six x or how many times x squared goes into six x to the fourth? Or in other words, what is six x to the fourth divided by x squared? Or you could even think about it x squared times what is going to give you 6x to the fourth? They all kind of mean the same thing. So it's going to be 6x squared. And then I distribute. So 6x squared times x squared would be 6x to the fourth. And 6x squared times 2x would be 12x cubed. Is it x squared times x, x to the third? Okay. Uh, what about 6x squared times negative 5? Minus 30x squared. So I did all my multiplication. And then what's my next step? Subtract everything, which means I'm changing all of my signs. So this is going to become a negative 6x to the fourth, a negative 12x to the third, and a positive 30x squared. So what happens to my 6x to the fourths? They cancel. They cancel, which they always should cancel. And again, if they don't cancel, you can guarantee you did something wrong. Okay, so what is 5x cubed minus 12x cubed? Negative 7x cubed. And then 0x squared plus 30x squared would be 30x squared. So just, again, imagine if this 0x squared wasn't here, then this 30x squared would be lined up underneath the 2x. So that would just kind of throw things off a little bit, okay? All right, what do I do now? Bring down the 2x. And my job now is to figure out how many times x squared goes into negative 7x to the third. Or what is negative 7x to the third divided by x squared? Negative 7x. And then I'll multiply. Negative 7x times x squared would be negative 7x to the third. And negative 7x times 2x would be what? Negative 14x squared. And negative 7x times negative 5? Positive 35x. So I did all my multiplication. And now I need to subtract, subtract which means I need to switch my signs. So plus, plus, and minus. So my 7x to the thirds cancel as they should. What is 30x squared plus 14x squared? 44x squared. And 2x minus 35x? Negative 33x. OK. 
Okay. Next. Bring down the eight. Bring down the eight. And now I need to figure out how many times x squared goes into 44x squared. 44 times, so it's going to be plus 44. So 44 times x squared is 44x squared. 44 times 2x, 88x. And then 44 times negative 5, minus 220. And now I need to switch my signs, subtract. So minus, minus, and plus. And my 44x squareds cancel, as they should. What is negative 33x minus 88x? Negative 121x. And then positive 8 plus 220? 228. So my answer would be 6x squared minus 7x plus 44 plus negative 121x plus 228 over x squared plus 2x minus 5. All right.